months. I, I mean, I, I don't want to talk about the Olympics anymore. I mean, I think it's dumb that they're having it, but fine, you know, do it, do it well, and let's just wait for it to happen in July. I do not want to talk about it every week, but every week something interesting happens, and the first thing I want to talk about is what an interesting thing happened with the Olympics yesterday. Several interesting things happened, but I'm just going to focus on one. You might recall earlier, um, like about a year ago, the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan, the FCCJ, which has a, a newsletter read by about 30 people, um, put on the cover of their, you know, little, little, uh, basically, press correspondence journalist newsletter, um, sort of a uh, parody of the Olympic, uh, you know, uh, rings logo with uh, COVID-19 uh, sort of virus looking uh, circles. Uh, pointing out uh, in uh, as in the great tradition of political cartoons, um, you know the, um, the 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 reality of issues facing the Olympics. The Tokyo Olympic Committee, a taxpayer fund, uh, a payer funded, you know, uh, sort of uh, organization, um, responsible for the Olympics, was outraged at the um, association of, of the way that they put a um, political sort of cartoon on their cover, showing the Olympic logo as a as a COVID nineteen virus, and demanded that the uh, FCCJ uh, apologize and retract the um, the uh, the cover and, and so on and apologize. And of course, being uh, not being like the press club, not being like the Japanese press club, cowed and you know at the mercy of the uh, Japanese political you know masters of the media, and, uh, and fearing and cowering at one, not wanting to offend them. Um, of course, the foreign press, uh, you know, the foreign correspondents uh, club of Japan, of course, immediately stood up and apologized profusely and retracted, uh, and apparently uh, doing so pissed off uh, me some members enough that they actually uh, quit the organization and talked about what a gutless for for an organization that's actually. Actually, uh, fighting, uh, trying to justify entry into press conferences that they are sometimes barred from on the basis that they are true, accountable media, and Japanese media isn't. They, they were, they behaved like a pretty uh, Kisha club, a, a pretty Japanese press club, sort of uh, do as they're told by the government kind of press org. Um, so the irony, you know, that, that was not lost on many people. Why do I bring that up? This was like a year ago. Well, what's been happening in recent months is there have been uh, the, the, the endless stream of entertaining scandals uh, going from the, um, you know, women hold up meetings to the, um, you know, let's dress a fat, a fat woman up as a pig. Um, you know, all of these, uh, what you know, wonderful leaks and whatever, the, the, the main news organization, the main tabloid um, that's been leaking most of these, that's been catching the scoops on these stories, has been the uh, Shu Kan Bunshin, uh, which is the weekly Bunshin, the, uh, what is it, Sentence Spring. I suppose you could call it, and and they are one of the, the the weekly magazines in Japan that are basically basically your 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 tabloid newspapers. They've got a lot of investigative journalists who look for scandals. They follow around celebrities and wait for them to be having affairs and catching photos of them and publish rumors about the royal family and generally you know sort of scandal rags. Um, but they've just found a never-ending stream of material, and, and the thing is, is that they are the ones that often come up with scandals which the mainstream press are too scared to print. But when it comes out in the tabloids. Um, you know, if there's something to it, then it will get picked up by the mainstream media. So in a way, the whole press thing in Japan actually relies on these tabloid rags, you know, to actually occasionally get scoops, given that mainstream media just doesn't have that capability or, or willingness. So um, when it came out during this week, an interesting story, uh, uh, one of a series of scoops. I mean, they're the ones who leaked the whole um, Olympic. They, they leaked the whole Maury's comments. Or so that, but the, the Maury's comments actually wasn't them, but there are a bunch of other things. Um, they found out that uh, the Olympic, the original plan for the Olympic opening ceremony, um, some of you may know that the, um, the movie Akira, the, the original manga Akira, and then the movie Akira actually referenced that apparently, in written in the 1980s, they had, they had said that the 2020 Olympics had been held in Tokyo, you know, when they talk about the post-apocalyptic post future world of Akira. And there was an idea for the original opening ceremony to actually recreate, you know, to do a bit of a tribute to Akira, actually have that cool motorbike uh, that they have in it, and do a big scene of the Akira motorbike going around sort of a post-apocalyptic sort of Tokyo kind of a scene, uh, which would have been hella cool. And, and this got leaked, and that this had been one of the original plans, which was cast aside, and actually most of the reaction online was favorable. It was like, wow, that would have been much better. You know, how did they go from that to dressing a woman up as a pig? 
Um, apparently, the Olympic Committee once again, however, discovering that once again, someone, you know, some information had leaked from their confidential plans. And, you know, they kept ruining everything with unrelenting uh, criticism of the Olympics and leaking secret and confidential information. They put out a message saying that the uh, Shukam Bunshin, this tabloid, should uh, not only cancel all issues of the latest uh, edition, which contains this confidential information about the original plans for the opening ceremony, but they should actually also recall all of the sold uh, episodes and whatever. And and apologize to them for um, investigating and journalisting them. And uh, it's kind of funny because, as you, like I say, there is a stereotype that the international press is actually quite good at holding Japanese uh, political power accountable and Japanese media is cowed. And this is why Japan does so lowly in the press freedom rankings. Um, that said, these tabloids are a slightly different beast. These are the scandal rags. And so they're a bit more fearless. However, when the um, Tokyo Olympic Committee um said uh take it down take it down not acceptable the um the shukan Lunshun actually immediately the same on the same day posted at first a short and then an extended edit editorial uh giving their response to the uh tokyo olympic committee on what they thought um uh and it's two paragraphs and it's it's actually such a good response i want to actually share the japanese with you um so this is from the shukan Bunshin site from the editorial board they did an extended one but for example um you know talking about the problems that they are wasting huge amounts of taxpayer money um you know inappropriate uh, management practices uh you know political uh you know corruption uh you know hu humiliating use of uh you know portrayals of people and so on and all of the other problems um they believe that they have a public duty to hold the uh, uh olympics accountable and um you know that uh the idea that there's a that, that there's a strong public interest in them continuing to report and to hold the public uh you know to hold the olympic committee accountable and the idea that that would uh, that they can block press freedom using uh threats of copyright action or interference with business is ridiculous given the role of their business but then the second paragraph is what i really love so it basically says you know um to 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 go to a you know publication uh, and by the way, you have to think in Japanese, the word order is different and they layer a lot on here. So you sort of have to imagine Yoda saying this. I, I, I won't do the Yoda voice, but let, let me go through because it's hard to translate. It piles on. They don't actually swear, but they, they, they're very direct <laughs> and appropriate. So they say, you know, the extremely uh, out of order, um, you know, request for recall and cancellation of sales of your, of your magazine that the, uh, the, that the is the current position of the Olympic Committee. Uh, this coming from a, uh, you know, a, a taxpayer funded uh, organization of huge public interest and importance, um, you know, this is completely out of order as far as we see it. Uh, you know, this is an absolutely um, inappropriate request and we uh, will absolutely continue what we are doing, uh, you know, the way that we are doing it. Um, that's their response. It's basically a huge fuck you to the Olympic Committee for telling them to recall their publication, which really shows up the FCCJ and actually good on them. I mean, they've, they've been they've got a bunch of scoops that have, you know, caused Mori to resign that of course, you know, they, they've, they've been speaking truth to power, actually. And this is the role of the tabloids. I mean, yes, they have booby pages. They have, uh, you know, I don't know if they still do this, but they, they definitely used to always have that there, you know, kind of back in the 1950s. They're, they're a bit of madmen in terms of the, the sort of gender stuff. But, you know, they play a role. There's a lot of sleazy journalism, a lot of made up stuff, a lot of libelous stuff. But, you know, they've been actually hitting it out of the park with the Olympic stuff. And this is just another case. And the fact that the, that the you know, this isn't the Beijing Olympics. This isn't the, uh, you know, we will have all the journalists arrested who are, you know, appropriately covering us. This is Japan, supposedly. The fact that the, um, you know, the, and not only that, but the people calling for the for the cancellation are, you know, people who Seiko uh, Hashimoto, a recently retired politician, minister for the Olympics. Um, in a taxpayer-funded organization calling for the media to censor uh, coverage of uh, them screwing up all the time. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, they, they said, screw yourselves, and it was wonderful. Um, I didn't actually do the Yoda thing at all. I'd actually did just translate it on the flight normally. But yeah, they did an extended um, explanation of that, but I thought that was actually glorious. I mean, it really was. It, in so many words, it was a, a screw you and the horse that you rode in on, in on to the government, and uh, congratulations. To Shukan Bunshin. And, and so, of course, I share this. I share this in English. 
uh, with a link to that article. And as always happens with any tweet I do that actually takes off and gets reshared and is popular, I misspelled uh, Shukan Bunshin as uh, Shunkan Bunshin. I put like an in on the end of everything somehow in my head. Uh, so as always, why is it that every every tweet that actually catches on that I do has spelling mistakes? I think that's life.